I'm excited to announce the release of firmware version 8. This update brings a variety of new features and improvements, giving you more flexibility and customization options. If you're happy with the current firmware on your device, updating is not required. However, if you need any of the new features listed below, you may want to consider upgrading. Please note that firmware updates come with a small risk. If the update process is interrupted, the device could become bricked. In such cases, you would need to open the frame and follow specific recovery steps to restore functionality. Please don't worry. This step is not that difficult. Please remember, you need to configure again with Web Configuration Tool once you update your device. The biggest change in this update is the bank support feature. Many users have requested this feature to allow the device to send more MIDI messages beyond the number of available elements. Now, this feature is finally here, enabling you to use multiple banks. While there is a limit to the number of banks the device can support, it should be sufficient for general use. For example, a 13-key octave can have up to 5 banks. The less elements the device has, the more banks it can support. You can easily set the number of banks using the Web Configuration tool. Here's an example of how I set up this device to use multiple banks, allowing it to have octaves. You can check the current bank index from the top menu. To switch banks, simply press the Bank Minus or Bank Plus button in the menu. Now, let's set the maximum number of banks. Click on the Global Variables menu. Set the maximum number of banks to 5. Don't forget to click the Set button. Now, the device has 5 banks. You can press the Plus and Minus buttons, and the web tool will display the current bank index. Each time you change the bank index, you need to configure the bank settings as needed. In this example, I press the Reset Local Default button to apply the default settings. As you can see, the encoder now supports bank and bank plus functionality when turned left or right. Repeat this setup for each bank, and once it's done, the encoder will allow you to switch banks up and down smoothly. Here's another example. This device has two keys below the knob. I set the left key as bank minus and the right key as bank plus. You can assign any key as bank keys. If the device has only one key, you can set it as bank plus and enable the bank looping feature in the global setup. With bank looping enabled, once the bank index reaches the maximum index, it will automatically start from zero again. Additionally, you can configure a key to jump directly to a specific bank index. It's time to reveal a secret. Since last year, all non-keyboard type devices have included two tiny buttons and LEDs for some devices. These buttons were secretly designed for bank changes, and now the time has finally come to use them. Encoder acceleration level is now available. The default value is 8. The encoder acceleration feature determines how quickly values are sent when turning the encoder. The faster you turn the encoder, the more values are sent, making large adjustments quicker and more efficient. If you prefer precise and consistent adjustments, you can disable acceleration by setting the value to zero. When acceleration is disabled, the encoder will send the same number of values regardless of how fast you turn it. This feature can be adjusted in the Global Variables tab, allowing you to customize it based on your needs. Potentiometer slash fader smooth filter level. The default value is four. This setting determines how many sensor values are averaged to produce the final reading. A higher filter level results in smoother movements, which can help eliminate sudden jumps or fluctuations. However, increasing the value also reduces responsiveness, making the controls feel slower. If you prefer a more immediate response, consider using a lower filter level. You can adjust this setting in the Global Variables tab to find the right balance between smoothness and responsiveness based on your needs. Minimum and Maximum CC Values for Knobs this setting applies to potentiometers, faders, and encoders in the normal MIDI mode. You can define minimum and maximum values to limit the range of MIDI messages sent by these controls. This is useful when you want to prevent values from going too low or too high. For example, if you want your potentiometer to only send values between 10 and 100, you can set the minimum to 10 and the maximum to 100. This ensures that the control stays within the desired range. You can adjust these values in the Global Variables tab to customize the behavior of your device. LED colors, only for one ES2K for now, February 2025. If your device has LEDs, you can configure them to reflect the current position when using normal mode. This color setup is only applied to the first bank index. For other banks, the LEDs will use predefined colors that cannot be changed. 
You can also turn off all LED colors completely by checking the Disable LED checkbox. Once disabled, the LEDs will remain off at all times. Currently, LED color configuration is available only for the One ES2K model. Anti-jumping for banks. Default. Unchecked. This setting applies to potentiometers and faders. When enabled, each bank remembers the last position of each control. This prevents sudden value jumps when switching banks by ensuring that no MIDI message is sent until the knob or fader is manually adjusted to match its remembered position. Encoders do not need this feature because they can resume from their previous position when switching banks. On the other hand, potentiometers and faders cannot start from their last position, which is why this feature is necessary to maintain smooth transitions. MIDI Custom Mode This is the biggest new feature in this release. Encoders and potentiometers can now send custom MIDI messages. You can assign different values for left turn and right turn independently. This enables relative control with fully customizable messages, offering greater flexibility in how encoders and potentiometers behave. Each key can now have separate behaviors for press action and elise action. Toggle mode is allowing the key to switch states instead of acting momentarily. If you'd like to try the web tool, please visit the page linked in the description. Take a moment to explore how it works. The configuration tool might change over time, but the main concept will stay the same. Thank you for watching.